How you doing my friends? Good to have you here. I know that I've been a little quiet on my channel here because I, it was the holidays and all that jazz, but I'm back to making some videos about things that I want to talk about and things I think you might find a little bit interesting. And today we are talking about Star Wars Battlefront 2 DLC and what to expect from the season pass. As of right now, I believe that we are getting two season passes and that is outside of the Last Jedi DLC that we already got for free. I know some of you still have a problem with EA and Battlefront 2. And I've said in a past video that I do not condone EA's actions, but I'm really enjoying Battlefront 2 and I think with these two season passes is the chance for EA to really come back and give the fans exactly what they want and, you know, make up for having a really bad launch. So, looking at the Last Jedi DLC, we're going to be able to figure out what to expect from the uh, Season 1 pass and the Season 2 pass. None of this is actually confirmed yet. This is just my thoughts and opinions on it. And EA, if you're watching slash listening, feel free to hire me to consult on games. I'll be more than glad to help you out. And you're going to see why after I break this down for you. First, let's start off with the first DLC. Now, we've established that The Last Jedi was its own DLC set. We got two new heroes, Finn and Phasma, and some A-Wing pilot that doesn't even really matter in The Last Jedi. Meh. So establishing that we have The Last Jedi DLC, it sounds like each patch they're going to do is going to be centered around a specific movie. The first season pass should center just on the prequels. I know that sounds a little scary, but there are some cool things that we got from the prequels. If we're starting with just episode one DLC, what can we expect? Well, I think that we should add two new characters just like we did last time. One good guy, one bad guy. We already have Darth Maul in the game, Game, and we have Emperor Palpatine. I don't think it makes sense to add a Darth Sidious to the game. For our hero, let's go ahead and add Qui-Gon Jinn, because why not? That sounds like a fantastic idea. We haven't seen Liam Neeson yet in a playable Star Wars Battlefront game, not even the first set, so this would be the perfect opportunity to throw him in. And for the bad guys, one we don't have yet that we had in the first Battlefront 2 game? Droid Dekas, or Destroyer Droids, or whatever we want to call them. So we'll add one a uh, light side hero and one dark side. Uh, this probably isn't a hero, it's probably just a re reinforcement. Some might say in heroes versus villains, the dark side is already overpowered. The light side needs another strong lightsaber wielding character, so let's throw in Qui-Gon Jinn in there to balance things out, and then you just have the droidica as a reinforcement for the dark side during normal gameplay. But let's not stop there. I think this is a chance for EA to add a new game mode, or just kind of add to their other game modes, where we can go ahead and relive or retell history in specific moments from the movies. For example, in episode one, I think we should get that end space battle scene where Anakin's flying around in the Naboo Starfighter. This game definitely has given us the chance to be kind of creative and have some fun with our imagination and adding different things that might not necessarily be there. So we should definitely have all the CIS aircraft that we already have, but Let's also add the Clone Wars ones in there just because it's kind of the same era, close enough. But add Naboo Starfighters, because the only time we can play them is the Naboo feed map when you're doing the Galactic Assault, and then you can play it for a few minutes. So let's get it out there in space and have some fun with it. That is the first set of DLC in Season 1. Now let's go to the second part. Episode 2! We did Episode 1, we already had The Last Jedi, now it only makes sense that we do the second prequel movie. Now in this one, we're going to add two new characters. I think they're going to add Mace Windu, because duh. This party's over. And also, we don't have Jango Fett yet. Now, yes, we have Boba Fett, and I do not want a reskin for him because that'd be dumb. They have two different weapons. Obviously, you have Boba Fett with his blaster rifle, and then Jango Fett has his two blasters. So already, they're going to play completely different, give him a different ability or two, because, hello, Boba Fett has a flamethrower, but we didn't get the chance to see that in his character already. So this is just giving us a chance to add the flamethrower ability to Jango Fett. So he's got two guns, he's got a flamethrower, he's got the jetpack. Great. Plus Mace Windu, that's going to be amazing. But let's not stop there. Right now, if you look at the hero ships versus the villain ships, there are way more hero ships than there are villain ships. This is a great chance for us to get another Slave 1. But we already have Slave 1. I know, and we already have two Millennium Falcons. So you've got the Boba Fett Slave 1, and you've got the Jango Fett Slave 1 in the second patch of DLC for Season 1. But let's not stop there. I think it's time to now not only add some new maps with uh, Geonosha, why don't we go ahead and do a new game mode, Jedis versus Geonosians. So now you have a bunch of Geonosians trying to take out all the Jedis and escape out of the Geonosian arena. 
I think it's a fun, cool game mode. You can go back and forth. But for right now, I think it's just a fun, cool addition to add to the game to give it some more life and energy. Now on to episode three. Now this is going to be the last bit of DLC for the season one pass. And in it, because it is the last set of DLC in season one, let's go out with a bang. If you believe all the rumors, we actually should be expecting to see Obi-Wan Kenobi and Grievous. Now, I think that EA should go in order of the different episodes, one, two, three, in their season passes. There's a chance that the next bit of DLC we get is episode three, just so we can get Grievous out there that much faster to make the fans happy, because goddammit, we want General Grievous in this game. I do think that we will get Obi-Wan Kenobi and General Grievous, and since we have Obi-Wan Kenobi, let's go ahead and give him a reskin also, so you can play as any of the Obi-Wan Kenobis from the prequels, and also old Obi-Wan Kenobi just because he's still a badass. Now, all the DLC so far up to this point has been just one hero, one villain. But this is the last DLC in season one, people, so let's go all the way. Let's add two more characters. I'm thinking Dooku, and also, have we not seen this DLC yet? We need Anakin Skywalker. Now, I'm not saying that they should put him on the light side. I'm not saying they should put him on the dark side. I'm saying he goes on both sides because just like in the first Battlefront 2 game, depending on the map that you were playing would determine if he was going to be a good guy or a bad guy. This time around, you got good Anakin or you got bad Anakin. But let's not stop there. This is the end of season one. We got to keep on going. Let's go ahead and add the space fight that we had at the very beginning of episode three. But this is where we really crank up the meter. This is where EA goes ahead and they, they fix all their mistakes and they appease the fans. Just like in the movie where they started in the Starfighters and then they made it into the ship, we are going to get boarding ships as characters. Not only will you be able to pick your spaceship, but you will also be able to pick your class. And in this battle, you can actually board other starfighters and try to destroy them from the inside, just like in the movie. Tell me this isn't an amazing idea. It starts off great with episode one, episode two, and then we raise the bar with episode three DLC ending season one. But hey, we're getting two seasons, so we're moving on. Now we're gonna go ahead and step back with episode four DLC, starting off season two. I know we raised the bar with episode three, but now we gotta lead back up to the end of season two. With this one, it was kind of hard to figure out what characters we haven't seen yet that deserve to have their place in the uh, the character roster. I'm thinking, now this is just an idea. Now this is a little hard because we haven't seen a duplicate hero character yet, but. I think for the first set of DLC in Season 2, the Episode 4 DLC, we should see Han Solo, but in his Stormtrooper outfit. Now I do think it does make sense to just go ahead and give his normal character a reskin, because why not? But this will give us a chance to give Han Solo some different life and different abilities. Now if you don't agree with me here, I completely understand. What other hero would you want to see in Episode 4? Let me know in the comments below. But hear me out. We aren't done there. We got one hero. We need one villain. Wonder what class we haven't had for a villain yet? A general. And what other general deserves to make it into this game more than Grand Moff Tarkin? That's right. Grand Moff Tarkin is actually going to have his chance to get out of the battle station and into the battle front. It'll be great. Intimidate players around him so that he can blow up a planet. I don't know what abilities to give him, but hey, what a fun character to add into the mix. Now, of course, he probably won't be someone's first pick when playing the game, but hey, if you got him, might as well use him. We are not done with the first set of DLC for Season 2 yet. I'm thinking we go back to Battlefront 1 and bring something from there that we can implement into this game, but do it right. We are going to add a Death Star Trench Run mode. Actually, that's not even making a mode. Let's just make it a map that's in normal uh, Starfighter Assault. What they did this time was make it an objective-based game mode. So, just go ahead and throw the trench run in there. You got the Rebels, you got the Imperials, and guess what? First you start off in space, then you have to do the trench run, you gotta throw in good guys versus bad guys. Just add that map. It'll be fantastic. Give me the original score. Oh, that's another thing. For all the DLC, we need to have new music every time. Like, there's some great music tracks in this game, but they're still missing some. I say, throw the rest in the game. But, time to move on! <laughs> Episode 5 DLC! Now this is the second set of DLC for the Season 2 Pass. Almost done, but not quite there yet. We are focusing on the Empire Strikes Back. In Battlefront 2, I think we've all noticed that we don't have a Dagobah map. Well, what a perfect time just to add Dagobah into the game right here, right now. Boom! Done. Fixed. Lots of fun. Now, let's take a look at our characters. In the Episode 4 DLC, I mentioned adding Han Solo, but in a Stormtrooper outfit, I know that was a little difficult. I'm thinking for Episode 5, we add another Luke Skywalker, but in this case, let's make him the Bespin Luke, so we can give him different Force powers to be just a little bit different from the other Luke Skywalker. Or, I'm gonna go back to 
episode 4 DLC right here, we can even switch this around. In episode 4 DLC, instead of having Han in a Stormtrooper outfit, we could just have normal Luke Skywalker on Tatooine with his Tatooine outfit, and he doesn't have the lightsaber yet, he just has a blaster. But that being said, I didn't really know what character to add to the uh, Empire Strikes Back DLC for the hero side. Lobot? No, but that's just the hero. Now let's look at the villain character we're gonna get. A lot of people were upset that we had Bosk in the game. First of all, y'all dumb. Bosk is fantastic and super fun to play as. But that's not stopped there with the bounty hunters. This is where the whole bounty hunter gang got introduced. Without any lines of dialogue for many of these characters, they still became super cool. Do we add Forloom? What about Zuckus? No, nah, he's not the coolest bet here. There is one pick I'm talking about, and no, it's not Dengar. I want to see IG-88 in this game. We've seen him in the expanded universe in cartoons, he was in the Shadows of the Empire video game, but now he's going to be a playable character. But now we're coming to the end of season two. It's time that we get to the final DLC. And I'm talking about the Return of the Jedi DLC. You have to go out in a bang. They haven't added the space battles where you can board other ships yet. Well, that's okay. This is definitely where they will add it. If it's not the end of season one, it will be the end of season two. But we're also going to see Death Star 2 as a um, as a starship assault stage where you will just like with the normal trench run be able to uh, go through the whole trap section in the beginning. Oh no. Here's how you end the DLC for season two. Not only do you have space battle, but you've got ground battle. So on the ground, you'll be able to play there and try to help the characters in space, which is played by a different group of players. And what you're doing down here will greatly affect what happens up here. The rebels won't be able to win the space battle until the rebels down here can actually go ahead and save the day. How amazing would this be? Going through all the episodes, I can't think of any other characters to add. So let's just have a lot of fun here. Let's add a new game mode, Hunt. In Hunt mode, it is a PvE mode or a PvPvE mode. I'm thinking either Endor or Tatooine maps. And that's right, we're hunting Ewoks and Jawas. How much more fun could you possibly have than if you're playing as the Stormtroopers and you're trying to kill a bunch of Ewoks? So the objective for the bad guys is to kill Ewoks. The objective for the good guys is to protect the Ewoks. Same thing on Tatooine. We're trying to kill Jawas. You're killing the innocent people. Okay, actually, that sounds horrible. That that makes it sound bad. Ewoks aren't innocent, neither are Jawas. You're killing these little criminals and cannibal teddy bears. What better way to end DLC than with that fun game mode just to give some more spice and life to Battlefront 2. Now, this is my idea of what EA should do for all of their Season 1 and Season 2 DLC. There's a lot of characters to add, there's a lot of game modes, and there's a lot of maps to add. I really, really, really hope that they, that they are on the same page that I am here, because I think it's a great idea. What do you think? And again, I understand if you're not a big fan of what EA did with their whole loot box system and everything, but honestly, if, if you're still kind of curious about the game, I do have a review for the game that I do think it is worth the money, and I, don't, I haven't spent any money on loot boxes, and I'm having a grand old time. I think that if not now, wait till all the DLC comes out, because if, if they listen to me, we are going to have an amazing Battlefront 2 game. So here's hoping. And of course, guys, I'm the Joven Shire. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like what you saw today, please hit that subscribe button because it really helps me out. Or hit that like button. Even that'll do something. Because this isn't the only video on the channel. And I think you're going to like the other videos that I've not only done before, but I will be doing in the near future. So till the next time, guys, I'll see you later.